So the Montage M is now officially released, as are more specs about what this new keyboard synthesizer workstation can do. So we're back in the normal location this week, in the workshop, not the exotic location I recorded the uh, SMR last week. But in the last week's SMR, what I said was the Montage, or the new Montage M to be more correct, was going to be released on the 9th of October, which was last Monday. Sorry guys, got that one wrong. Yamaha, just to spite me, released it on Tuesday the 10th of October. So I was out by a day. Um, <laughs> And pretty much overnight from the Monday to the Tuesday, all of a sudden a load of videos from various UK retail outlets. I suspect it's the same around the world, but in the UK we had Antitons, we had Bonners, we had all started releasing videos on uh, very early on the Tuesday morning to coincide with this release. Um, I have to be honest with you, I haven't seen very much from the US, but then I haven't been looking for it because there's been enough in the UK for the Montage M. Um, I did say in the previous mo in the previous video that um, pricing I thought was a little high at $4,999 for the big one. Um, pricing has been subdued a little bit. Um, the three models are currently on pre-order. You can't just pop into a shop and buy one at the moment. Um, but on, on pre-order, the M6 comes in at um, £3,219, the M7 at £3,629, and the biggie, the M8X, comes in at £4,049. Uh, that's probably around about £700 cheaper than the $4,999, which was the price that was reported uh, two weeks ago. Now, so the top end is not as bad as it could be, but it still is top of the top end of the range. Um, the as I said in the previous video, the big 88 key version, the M8X, is about 500 pounds or so more than the equivalent Roland Phantom. Um, I'm not going to talk about the AT for this or the Nautilus AT for this. Um, however, I do think at this point in time, at the point of me recording this. I think there are only two Yamaha Montage M8Xs in the country. In fact, I think the only keyboard from the M range that is in the country is the M8X. And the reason why I say that is because nobody has been demoing the M7 and the M6. All the demos have been done on the M8X. And the way that the videos have kind of been staggered, it makes me think that I've only got a couple of them in the country. Um, Andertons are quoting a retail stock um, arrival on the 19th, which is uh, blah, 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 Thursday of the coming week. So we'll see if that turns up, but that's the earliest you can theoretically get your hands on the keyboard by wandering into a uh, a retail outlet and purchasing it, which you should be, if Anderton's are true to the word, you should be able to do that on Thursday um, with a big credit card bill, of course. So. That kind of is the Yamaha Montage key bits of get your hands on it news. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. But with the release of the keyboard, a bunch of other specifications and information started to, to dribble its way into the market. So for those that are interested, um, what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd do a summary of all the new stuff I've learned this week. And for those who are not interested, you know what? This is the point where you hit the stop button and damage my YouTube statistics. So this one's the one that always comes up when you talk about the big keyboards weight. Everybody has a problem with weight, uh, apart from my friend Wayne Harris who says he's a bodybuilder. Um, <laughs> sorry Wayne. Um, but basically a big board is something that is difficult to lug around and manoeuvre and some of the older boards that I have are definitely two stroke three roadies to be able to manoeuvre them. Um, 
otherwise you put your back out. So in terms of weight, the key thing that I take away from looking at the specs is that the weight of the new boards is roughly within a key kilo of the old boards. Now, for those who sort of like sit in in, in old money, a kilo is about 2.2 pounds. So a couple of pounds either way. Um, and if I look at the specifications, so the M7, sorry, the M, the original Montage 6 and 7 are a little bit lighter than the new Montage M6 and 7 keyboards. Okay, fine, that's fine. They've put new stuff in it. It's gonna be a little bit heavier. But this one's the one that surprised me. The M8X, which is the new 88 key keyboard with a brand new, um, the GEX keyboard on it, is actually a kilo lighter. And again, for those of you in old money, that's about two, pound, uh, two pounds lighter. Um, so, what we take about from this is that the new keyboard that has been developed for this new Montage M platform or the M8 platform is actually lighter. And there is a little bit of an explanation about why that might be a little bit later in this video. But I'm sure that anything that is lighter than what they currently have is good news for the Road Warriors and the Roadies. Now I've written in my notes that this next bit is about Weird Polyphony 1. Why do I mean Weird Polyphony? Well, one of the big things that Yamaha have made a, uh, a splash about is the fact that this new Montage M range has a 400 note polyphony. And 400 is a bit of, given how these things normally work, uh, 64, 128, 400 doesn't divide by Eight, um, in the same way that it would if it was um, 64, 128, da, 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 right? So, and typically on a lot of keyboards, that is kind of the, the, the way it is divisible. Um, but it's not on this keyboard. The way that Yamaha described the polyphony on this is 128 notes polyphony for the AWM2 X engine factory presets, 128 polyphony for the AWM2 X user presets, 120 note polyphony for the Yamaha FMX engine, and 60 notes polyphony for the Yamaha ANX engine. So basically, the polyphony goes with the engines. So if you were purely using the AWM2 X engine in your patch, or your performance um, preset, then you only have 128 notes of polyphony. So it's it's kind of, it's slightly misleading, but it's not misleading if that makes any sense. Um, so yes, there are technically 400 notes available, but it's split between the engines. So you have to be effectively using different sounds, different tones, from the different engines to be able to get 400 notes. And even having said that, you do have a limitation on the ANX, which only has 60 notes available. So while Yamaha are correct in the big headline number, in the underlying how it works, it's not quite 400 notes. If you're still, if you're using only one of the engines, then you are limited to 128 notes or 16 notes if it's the ANX virtual analog synthesizer engine. Now, you probably could get 400 notes if you started layering and splitting the keyboard in certain ways using different um, uh, tones from different engines and also splitting the keyboard in certain ways and then driving the thing through MIDI. Yes, you can probably get 400 notes would you get 400 notes um, in a normal use, play usage scenario? Probably not, probably not. But it's a good headline grabbing figure, isn't it? 400, which is more than the other um, keyboards or workstations on the market in this space. And it also, um, you know, one of the big things about what's been coming out on the Roland Phantom is lots of people have been complaining about the fact it keeps running out of notes. And that's probably to do with the way the sounds are layered which is something very similar to this scenario. Um, I can't remember what the Phantom is off the top of my head, but that's probably why it's running out of notes. 
um, you have to use the keyboard in a, in, a, in a certain way to ensure that you're not playing all the notes and just muting parts of the keyboard. You really need to set your splits up to make it work properly. Um, anyway, I think that kind of is more detail now on what 400 notes polyphony actually really means. Weird polyphony one. So in the previous section I said weird polyphony one. Now this is weird polyphony two. Um, and I have to say, I had to go and look this up in quite a few places. And the one place that I found actually really explained this really well was Scott's synth stuff. So this is where this explanation actually comes from. Um, although I have embellished it a bit because I think even Scott struggled a, a little bit. So why people have said AM, the AM2 engine, AEWM2 engine, is not 256 note polyphony. Um, as in 128 plus 128. It's actually 128 factory presets and 128 user presets. So you could argue it is a 256 note polyphony, but it's not. It's only 128 note polyphony because you have to play two different sounds and every, each one will only play 128 notes. Right. But therefore, why can't it be, why can't I say I want 128 notes of factory presets or 128 notes of user presets? Now, this is where we get into the technical bit. In the current montage design, the AWM2 sounds are generated by two SWP70 chips. They are the brains of the operation that generate the tones. In the current architecture of the old keyboard, chip two is a slave to chip one. Chip one accesses the four gig of tone storage, which gives you effectively the way it's split is 175 gig, sorry, 1.75 gig of uncompressed user presets and 2.25 gig of compressed, which equates to uncompressed five gig of factory presets. So that gets you kind of back to the numbers in the in the Yamaha literature for the current montage. But because they work as a master and a slave arrangement, they only have 128 notes of polyphony in total because it's the maximum amount you can get on one chip, not the maximum amount you can get on both chips because of this master slave arrangement. Now, in the new montage, they have changed the way that these two chips work. You still have two SWP70 chips, but now each chip has effectively access to its own four gig of memory. Got it so far, right. So chip one has four gig of compressed memory, which equates to 10 gig of uncompressed memory, which is what you see on the literature. Um, and that is with that has the factory presets. So on the montage, all the factory presets are compressed to save space. Um, and that's true of the old 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 montage and the new montage in. Um, so that and that chip can handle 128 notes, right? So that's the first 128 notes for factory presets. The second chip also now has access to four gig of tone storage. And again, that second chip has 128 notes of polyphony on its own right and access to separate tones. So what they've done is split the chip one is factory presets and chip two is four gig of, well, 3.9, whatever, but four gig effectively of user presets. So you end up with 128 factory and 128 user. <coughs> now, I know that sounds a bit weird, and it is a bit weird, but that's how Yamaha have done it, and that's how they get to these 128 polyphony notes for AW2 engine twice, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it's made a lot of sense. When I looked at this video in post, I realized it was far too long. So I split it into two. So this is the end of part one. Hopefully I'll see you guys 
in part two, which will be published tomorrow.